<laughs> Some people take road trips so they can get to their destination, but we take road trips so we can experience the journey. And rather than showing a stereotypical cross-country road trip, we decided to take it one step further. We want to drive from Florida to Alaska. I took my STI-swapped Subaru Forester, and Ben took his Evo 9 MR on a journey of over 10,000 miles. We have only three weeks to travel through 23 states and two Canadian provinces. This three weeks was the longest block of time that we had available to us all year, so we wanted to take advantage of it. Our goal? To see as much of the continent as possible. Uh, so neither of us were detained or arrested by the, the Canadian officials. Ben was not shot by a Mountie. Uh, so I think we are off to a uh, real good start. Uh, they're measuring in kilometers per hour rather than miles per hour. But I think the real question that we need to figure out is, are Canadian hours the same as US hours? We might be needing to be driving in reverse. And so am I supposed to be on the other side of the road? Does red still mean stop in Canada? So do I go through this roundabout counterclockwise? Can you turn left on green here in Canada? That's like the first decent question any of us have asked. <laughs> it's a weird experience to have driven into another country. Everything just feels so different. Hope you have a great trip to Alaska. You're in Surrey right now, just out of Vancouver. Awesome. Canadians have a reputation for being extremely polite, and so far, we found that to be true. We met our first international subscriber only a few miles into Canada. He had a sweet imported twin turbo legacy that we can't even get in the States. We only drove an hour into Canada, and before you knew it, we were in Vancouver. The first and last major city that we'll see for a while in Canada. Vancouver looks like an awesome place, and I wish we could spend more time here. We had dinner at a lovely little restaurant in Horseshoe Bay, but the sun is setting, and we're both super excited to get up and into the mountains. Uh, we are driving through British Columbia, Canada right now. Uh, today, we're going from Vancouver-ish area to as far as we can go. Gorgeous, just unbelievable. The mountains everywhere, you know, everything, you feel so tiny and insignificant. Holy cow, like, there's like a waterfall, like just in the middle of these two mountains. It's just like, the views here, just non-stop amazing. You feel so tiny, like with all these giant mountains. It is so crazy beautiful. So we are currently on an off-road path. <laughs> the first time uh, in our in our trip so yeah this is the main route uh, to get up there and it's uh, gravel for just this short little bit right here and that sign is upside down today consisted of driving some truly incredible roads it left us all pretty speechless however our intern Devin did have one major complaint I don't have service to send snapchats to people and just too good looking here. Kids these days. We all greatly enjoyed the drive today and were genuinely astonished by the mountains and lakes in British Columbia. That was until I got a flat tire. Uh, so my tire is low. Hopefully for some reason it just lost some air with no explanation and I can just fill it back up, but most likely it's leaking for a reason. Maybe a nail in the tire or something. Luckily I have a full size spare, so it should be fairly okay. But we'll find out. I removed the tire to take a look at why I might have lost air, and sure enough, it had a screw in it. You got screwed, dude. We're at a Canadian tire, but unfortunately, they're closed. So it looks like we're going to have to fix everything ourselves. I did happen to bring a full-size spare just in case something like this were to happen, but the tread on my current tires has been worn down a little bit. Replacing just one corner with a new tire could potentially cause drivetrain damage. After feverishly googling Mitsubishi's all-wheel drive system, I decide to plug the damaged tire. Just 
clogged in my first tire and it wasn't like as easy as I thought it was gonna be. Kind of a pain. I'm dubious about how well it's actually gonna work. I don't know if they intended for you to go 5,500 miles on a plug. Still probably gonna put my extra spare on, my, my full size spare, uh, just so that everything can kind of keep wearing, wearing at a close range. And then if later on that gets a nail in it or something, then I'll switch over to this guy. We drove as long as we could, and it wasn't until 3 a.m. that we stopped at the hotel. All right, we have been driving in Canada for 15, 20 hours now, uh, and haven't stopped at the Tim Hortons yet, so I think it's time. Um, I'm about to try poutine for the first time. Um, What's poutine? It is potato wedges, gravy, and cheese. It's different, very good. <laughs> I never heard of this until... Is that a polite way of saying that you don't like it? No, I, I really like it. Yep, it's good. Tasty. Amazing. <laughs> British Columbia, Canada is so amazing. Every corner you go around is a new sight to see better than the last. We're getting further and further from civilization the further north we go. The typical route to Alaska is on the Alcan Highway, which is much further east from us but we want to go up the Pacific Coast Highway in the US and along the coast mountains here in Canada, and it's a good thing because these mountains are out of this world. The road we were driving on became so devoid of traffic that we were able to stop whenever we liked to take pictures, but we weren't alone out there. The air was absolutely thick with blood-sucking, potentially West Nile-having mosquitoes. There were more mosquitoes in British Columbia than there are vapes at a Subaru meet. What's your setup going on right now? My setup is uh, this dope putty, trying to keep the bugs away so I can live another day because I like my blood um, while I take pictures with my, my handy cam right here. There's, there's something something the camera needs to see as well. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, dude, what's your setup, man? <laughs> Straight up ripping off my guy because, uh, I mean, it's a little bit late. I don't know if you can see. Uh, I basically got like little devil horns uh, from how bad my bites are. Yeah, so like, it actually feels like my face has been numbed a little bit. Um, like, it's like if you got punched in the face and then like the swelling like kept you from like really being able to move your face. That's kind of how I feel right now. Like my forehead is so swollen and oh my God, I yeah. I can just feel. We're not gonna let mosquitoes ruin this trip. We just gotta keep driving. A few hours later, we decided to get some gas cans to keep with both of us since gas stations are starting to get more scarce. Hopefully we won't need to use these. may not be as evident in this video is that we pull over to the side of the road a lot to take pictures and video and stuff like that so all those like flyby shots that you see of us going by, uh, going past the camera means that we've stopped on the side of the road gotten the camera out dropped somebody off gone back up the road to film the shot go past them come back pick them up and then continue on but it is so worth it because every time we stop it's just gorgeous out here We're getting close to Alaska. We're less than a day away now, but the roads are getting more and more deserted. So we just had a chat with a couple of bikers uh, who were just up in Alaska, actually. They're from Montana. Apparently service gets real bad up there, so we're gonna see if we can download maps so we're not relying on data. Hopefully they have 91 octane, because if they don't, that's gonna be a real showstopper. These cars really will not operate without 91. It's starting to get a hair nervous. Um, that, you know, we might have major complications uh, with the rest of the trip uh, going up further north, uh, especially if you don't have gas. Stakes are, stakes are getting raised a little bit. So uh, we've got like a man-made river type thing that they've done here. Uh, definitely off-roading the Evo because Ben just scraped his, uh, his Forester and his Forester's quite a bit higher than my car. So let's see how that goes. Uh, we are, I don't know where we are. <laughs> We're out in the middle of nowhere, right? There's nothing around but this little tiny gas station. So any gas station that we see, we take the opportunity to get gas because we don't know the next time that we're gonna get it. 
Both of our cars only have a range of just over 200 miles, which means we need to fill up a lot. With gas stations so scarce here, it's becoming a problem because once we find a gas station, they're either out of gas or only offer 87 octane. So we're riding together just in the Forester uh, so that we're only burning one car's worth of fuel instead of two, uh, just to search for another gas station up about 15 minutes up the road, 15 minutes back, so that we're burning as little gas as possible. Things rapidly got more severe. Yeah, <laughs> like, man. We are like so close though. I, think I feel bad. No fuel. No fuel. It's, it's good. Three kilometers. All right. So it's good. It is. So that there, that's confirmed. There is gas there. Yeah. In three kilometers. I don't know if it's gonna be good gas or not. But I mean, I don't think anything we put in our cars for the past day has been good gas. Yeah. Uh, we're like so close. Ice cream. They have ice cream. Worth it. <laughs> Oh, there you go. It's gas. Oh, turn right. It's yep, actual yep. pumps. Yeah. Oh, I see two different handles. One kind of one for diesel. Yeah, definitely one for diesel. Ah, dang oh, it. God. Hell. All they have is 87 octane. So. Dollar 67 per liter, which is really expensive. That's six dollars a gallon for it, for like unleaded regular. Yeah. Looks like we can't make it any further north than here. Dang. I mean, this honestly, this would be easy if we did if we had normal cars. If it we wouldn't had, yeah. even be impressive. Yeah, for sure. Normal cars would have three times the range we have. Mm hmm And they would be probably more reliable, and they would run on eighty-seven. Yeah. But I guarantee we wouldn't we wouldn't have had as much fun. Oh no! No way, dude. Yeah. And there's still a bunch of fun ahead of us. Uh, we're yeah. Gonna, we're gonna get to Alaska. It's two a.m. and we don't have any cell signal to look on the GPS for gas stations further up the road. From what we can see, there's no gas stations for at least 50 miles, so we knew we wouldn't make it. Thankfully, we had gas cans with us to be able to fill up and make it back down to the last gas station. We're not going to drive this far and not make it to Alaska. There's a small town just off the panhandle of Alaska called Hyder, and it's only a few hours away from us. And after 6,000 miles on the road, we made it to Alaska. Kind of cheated a little bit. Our original destination was Anchorage. This is not Anchorage. Uh, we thought, well, maybe we'll dip by Skagway. Yeah. It's a, about a day's drive closer. And we totally could have done it, but they didn't have premium gas, so we couldn't have done it. No way for us to get there. So this isn't Skagway. This is, I think, the southernmost town that you can actually access by road in Alaska. Hyder, Alaska. Has your car ever been this filthy? No. I don't know of any car I've ever owned to get this filthy. Hyder, Alaska is actually a really interesting town. There's only 87 residents, and the only way into this town is through Canada. The town is so small, it doesn't even have a police officer. In fact, if you live in Hyder, you have to cross the border just to get to the grocery store. We are on a, um, a little walkway. Um, apparently, this is a, a pretty popular place for bears to hang out. So we're on this nice and safe walkway, and there's streams on either side of us. It's gorgeous, so we're just out here exploring. What are the odds you think you're gonna see a bear? Um, I don't know. I think if we have food, uh, we will up our chances. What would you do if you encountered a bear? I don't know the proper thing to do. So it's probably not a good idea to um, bear watching. And we're usually in our cars, so we can just drive away. Yeah. Mm. And there's bears. There are bears. We've seen three bears so far. Yeah. Uh, one bear we actually saw, Ben and I were, were, were sitting there, just minding our own business, side by side in the road, like you do. All of a sudden, a bear ran out behind us. Uh, naturally, our intern Devin was filming at the time. Yep. He didn't get the bear, but he got our reaction. Uh, in an effort to alert Ben to the bear, he honked my horn three times. Yep. At which point, we both launched our vehicles as quickly as possible. To... Great reaction time, by the way. Thanks, man. I... We, we both nailed it at the exact same time. Yeah, very quick yeah. reaction time on both our parts. Yeah. Uh, we launched our cars to try and avoid the bear, so, you know, see who could get away from the bear more quickly. Yep. Uh, as it turns out, Ben can get away from bears more quickly than I can, and my clutch hates getting away from bears. Yeah. Uh, my clutch actually hates everything right now, uh, and is hanging on by a thread. That's my first time ever launching the car 
for a good cause. You know, I mean, me and Devin are yeah. both still in one piece. Not, yeah. We're not bear droppings, yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, assuredly, you know, next time we would like to be a little bit faster uh, than the Subaru getting away from bears, but maybe with the next clutch. Bottom line is, unless I'm trying to get away from bears, there's really been nothing that my car hasn't been willing to do, nor yours. Yeah. They've both been extremely well behaved. They've gotten us all over Canada, all over the US. So, I mean, I already feel like a winner. Oh, for sure. And I need to say that because if my clutch goes out in the next 20 miles, I can't, I can't feel like a loser. Like, I, I gotta feel like I got something out Dude, of this. The fact that both of our cars are here right now is incredible. So, we're gonna head back out of Hyder. We're gonna come out of Hydering. We have to go through customs to make sure we don't sneak in whatever something. Hyder has. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a bear. <laughs> um, and then we'll be back in Canada proper, British Columbia. Drive back down, hopefully. We've made it to Alaska, but the trip is long from over. The objective now is to make it home. So Ben doesn't want to stop because his clutch is burning out and obviously we don't want to use the clutch uh, as much as we have to. But my windshield is filthy, dirty, and I can't see out of it very well. Devin here has offered to clean my windshield while we're driving. <laughs> Shirt's a little wet, I got hit by more bugs. You did a pretty good job, For dude. this situation, I think I deserve a pretty stellar job. <laughs> yeah, like... We're going to drive back down through Alberta, Canada. And we've heard that this is one of the most gorgeous places on Earth. Every day that we drive on this trip just gets better and better. The Canadian Rockies were spectacular. That is a full-grown elk. That's insane. What a rack. The views are unbelievable. Like, we would want to stop at like every corner, because yeah. every time you go around a corner, there's another unbelievable view. Yeah, we're like, oh man, this would be great. Let's stop, let's get a drone shot. <laughs> this is the best thing we've seen so far. Until the next corner. I'll give you $20, 20 US dollars, right. if you lick and drag on my front bumper. Not lick. just touch, like, yeah. like drag right. across it. What? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, we are just outside of Calgary, Alberta in Canada. Uh, we are at a gas station slash truck stop type thing. It's been 7,500 miles. We need to change our oil again. So I'm gonna set a timer again, and we will see if I can do it any faster or slower than I did it last time. I think it was 18 minutes last time, so we'll see if we can beat that. Ben did his oil change in 23 minutes last time. So long as I'm faster than that, I'm happy. So on Subarus, they put the oil filter right next to the exhaust manifold, kind of wraps around it. I got some oil on the exhaust manifold, so it's, it's gonna smoke when I get started. Subaru engines are very particular about their oil change intervals. They have a lot of internal filters that can clog if the oil breaks down too much. So it's important that I keep changing my oil every 3,750 miles, even if I'm on a long road trip. Just stopped the timer at exactly 19 minutes. So it actually took me longer this time than last time. So Ben just did a 19 minute oil change. He got slower. So I need to improve on a 23 minute oil change. Ben thinks that he beat me last time that we had an oil change competition, which, yes, I suppose he did. But what he doesn't know is that this time I will do absolutely whatever it takes to win. This guy sandbagged me on the last one. 11-12. This guy. I may not have drained all the old oil out. <laughs> Thank you.
At long last, it's time to leave Canada. It's been a great 2,000 miles roaming this gorgeous country, but now it's time for us to get back to the U.S. Welcome back to the U.S. Uh, we're in the great state of Montana, which I haven't visited before. It should be pretty interesting. Interesting in the lack of interesting things. Yeah. Like this scene right here looks like the background to like all the Windows computers yeah. from like 2002. Yeah. This is great. This is great. <laughs> You're doing great, Montana. <laughs> I'm excited to look at this for the next few hours. A handful of silos. Just filling up here at another random gas station on the way to Minneapolis. Taking a look at my car. It seems like it's been sitting in a field for like years. Do you guys see that? Unbelievable. Yeah, that's that's the ski box. She's uh she's seen some miles. That is permanently a part of the look of this car now. So that was 17 miles per gallon. The high speed roads here through the Midwest is killing our fuel economy. And we have about 17 hours of driving on these straight roads through the Midwest. 8,832 miles. That's how far we've gone so far. We're headed to Minneapolis, Minnesota, where Ben will get some work done on his Evo to replace his failed clutch. Only 1,000 more miles to go and we'll be there. We've made it to Minneapolis, Minnesota in record time, which is surprising since the clutch on the Evo has been basically non-existent since we ran from that bear. So I've come here to the esteemed RS Motors where they're going to change my clutch. We are here at RS Motors uh, in Burnsville, Minnesota. We know RS from a bunch of the grid life stuff and super lap battle stuff that they've done. Uh, they built crazy Evos, so I figured my car should probably be a cinch. We sourced the clutch and flywheel, both for advanced auto parts, uh, both Xetti parts made in Japan. It was awesome to see that we didn't even have to go outside of advanced to get you know, a clutch and flywheel. They, they had OEM replacements from Xetti. Absolutely the best way that I could have had my clutch changed out. If I had just done it as a maintenance back in Virginia, it wouldn't have been done this well. Fun part. This is the part, yeah. Like Ron said, either come in easy or out. Front clutch. You can see there's grooves missing from here. And this pretty much got heated up and fused itself on the flywheel and left the material on here. Pressure plate didn't take a beating, but the flywheel did. That's a stock clutch for you. Not made for launches. How many Evo transits do you think you've done? Oh, this week alone, we're on, that's, that'll be the third this week. I think we usually get two or three a week. We're more than halfway back, so I think we're doing pretty good. How long you guys been at it? Uh, I don't know, two and a half, three hours, I think. If I were gonna have anyone work on my car, it'd have to be RS Motors. These guys have been in the Evo game for years, and they've built some of the most utterly insane time attack Evos in North America. Ronnie, Tone, Paul, and Trevor were all so <laughs> hospitable and did an incredible job installing the new clutch. So thanks guys, and Paul out. got the new clutch put in uh, from advance uh, into the Evo by RS Motors. They had it done in like four hours, like literally transmission out, old clutch out, new clutch in, transmission back in, everything buttoned up in four hours. Crazy. The car feels great. The clutch is much lighter than my last clutch. Uh, on our way to Chicago for grid life round three at uh, Autobahn. We spent the next three days here in Chicago where we filmed Grid Life. It was nice to see all of our friends here tracking their cars and it's always such a good time. But after 20 days on the road, we are ready to be home.
10,665 miles, 23 states, two Canadian provinces, in one trip of a lifetime. This was a trip that I will never forget, partially because it was so spectacular, but also because this video series will be online forever. These weren't the most practical cars to take on this road trip, and that was the point. We wanted to take cars that were fun to drive on the journey, not necessarily because we needed to get to our destination. As it turns out, Evos aren't necessarily guaranteed to leave you stranded with a broken transfer case six miles away from your starting point, and Subarus aren't just for people who own Labradors. Our 10,000 mile road trip was mostly a success. Our timeline was a bit tight, and we may have only reached Alaska on a technicality, but we had very legitimate fun. We saw a lot of cool stuff along the way, and visited a lot of amazing places. But the best part of all of it is getting to do it in my car. Guys, <laughs> hope you have a great trip to Alaska! <laughs> Please, sir. I'd like to come into Canada. <laughs> no matter how much you try, the journey just can't be planned. And that's why I can't wait to do another trip like this. Maybe not in our cars, and maybe not to Alaska. And maybe not even something as practical. But I can't wait to go on another adventure again. Advanced Auto Parts made this trip happen. Without their support, we would never have been able to take this trip. So, Advanced Auto, how about another trip?